Welcome to lesson 16b, Rules for Integration. So we've looked at in the past a little bit of antiderivatives and the introduction to integration where we would add a c to the antiderivative, um, thus showing that there could be some sort of translation, a vertical translation of the function um, where the graph would just, uh, the, the gradient of the function would still just be the same. So I've shown before where we'd have maybe some sort of graph like that uh, on some axis. And so if we had a tangent like this, if that function were actually translated down, for example, and looks something like this, um, the tangent there at the same spot would still be the same. It would still be parallel. So that, that change in the C value, the vertical translation, um, doesn't change the, the gradient of the tangent. Okay, so that's what we have to now pay attention to um, is adding on the C uh, to any antiderivative that we're going to be looking at. So um, there were some developments of these integral rules in the textbook on page 385. Um, so I'll just kind of go over them through them quickly right now with you. Uh, if we have a constant, uh, then the integral is going to be kx plus c. Obviously, we have to add the c to it, but the constant is just some just some value, right? So it's just some sort of horizontal uh, line, and the integral to that would be with x. So this is technically uh, kx to the power of zero. And then, of course, we add one to the exponent uh, and add c, and that's how we get that. If we have uh, x to the power n, where n cannot equal negative one, this is a special case, which we'll see all the way down here. Uh, but when x to the power n, we add one to the exponent, and then we divide by the new exponent. And of course, then we add c. Uh, e to the x, well, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So the integral of that would be e to the x plus c. Uh, 1 over x is the same as uh, x to the power of negative 1. So that's that special case we talked about ooh, also like 30 seconds ago. And uh, that integral is actually, because if we add 1, we're going to get x to the power of 0. So then the x would disappear. So that's why we can't uh, do that. So the integral of x to the power of negative 1 is ln of absolute value of x plus c. And of course, x cannot equal 0 because 0 is not in the domain of logarithms. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. So the integral of cosine x would be sine x plus c. And we know that the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So then if you took the integral of sine x, you would get negative cos x plus c. And I know I should be saying cosine here. I apologize for all you purists out here. Okay, so uh, let's just take a few examples and see how this all comes together. So if we're going to integrate this with respect to x, uh, that would be the same as us writing uh, the integral of 3x to the power of 4 minus 1 half x squared plus 5x dx dx is the same as with respect to x. And then we just integrate them. So um, or find the antiderivatives, I guess. So we have that 3. Um, we increase 1 to the exponent. So that becomes 5. And then we divide by the new exponent. Um, for this one, we've got that 1 half. And then we um, add 1 to the exponent to get 3. And then we divide by the new exponent or multiply by the reciprocal of the new exponent. And I'll just put a little multiplication sign there. And then here again, we've got five. We add one to the exponent to get two. We divide by the new exponent and add C. So then just to simplify all this together, or just tidy it up a little bit, we get three fifths X to the power of five. That stays the same. Then we have that one half multiplied by one third, which gives us one over six x cubed, and then 5 halves x squared will stay the same, and then plus c. 
So as this wise person over here is saying, um, if we differentiate this exponent, or sorry, this, uh, this integral that we just found, we should get the original expression again. So if we did that, if we did d d x of this, we're, we're differentiating that with respect to x, we would bring that five down in front here. So we'd end up getting three x to the power of four, and then minus three over six x squared, uh, and then two times a half is just one, so five x, and then that plus c disappears. And then you can simplify that negative three, six into one over two. And this, as you can see, is what we have up here. So that must mean that this derivative right here is correct. Sorry, integral. I keep saying derivative and I apologize. Okay, so we're just gonna kind of go through the next couple examples in a similar fashion. Um, the antiderivative of cosine is going to be, well, we'll take a look up here at this. We see that the integral of cosine is sine x. So we're gonna have sine x. And then the integral of e to the x is just e to the x. So we get negative three e to the x and then plus c. And that's it. So when, if we were to differentiate that, we would get the same value. We get the same function that we started with. So the derivative of sine x gives us cosine x and the derivative of negative three e to the x gives us negative three e to the x and the derivative of c would give us zero. All right, we can move up here. Now, before we integrate this, I would change that that two over x, I would change that to look like two times one over x. And the reason why I would do that is because up here we have the integral rule for one over x right here. And then, so we know that that would just be ln or the natural logarithm of absolute value of x. And then I'll change this to negative three x to the negative one half dx. And now we're ready to integrate. So that's just going to, that one over x is the natural logarithm of absolute value of x. We're going to have that two stays out there because that's the coefficient ln or natural logarithm of absolute value of x. And then we got the minus three here. X, we're going to add one to the exponent, it becomes one over two. And then we have to divide by the new exponent, which is one half. And then plus C. And then we'll just simplify this. So we'll get two ln absolute value of x minus, well, that three divided by one half, you flip and multiply, so you get six x to the one half plus c. So then if we're going to differentiate this to test, uh, two ln, well, the, the derivative of ln x is one over x, okay? So that's what we have up here in the first term. And then minus six x to the one half, the one half comes in down in front, multiplies by six to give us three and then x to the power negative one half. And that negative would drop the x into the denominator with the square root. And of course the c would disappear. Okay, so those are those two examples. And go on to something a little more exciting here. So here we've got four x two plus seven x all over root x. Now that would um, involve the like the quotient rule. Um, but because we don't know the opposite of quotient rule right now, what we're gonna do is we're going to rearrange this and split the denominator, sorry, split the numerator. So we'll have this plus seven x over root x dx. Now those root x's are actually x to the power of one half. So I think what I'm gonna do is just gonna change those to x to the power one half right away. And these are exponents, should be. Um, and then that three in, the, in this exponent up here in the numerator, well, that's the same as saying six over two. So then if we employ 
exponent laws, we've got four x to the power six over two minus one half because we're we got power laws and we got the same base. So x cubed divided by x to the one half is x to the power three minus one half, which is six halves minus one half, which is x to the five halves. And then we have the same sort of scenario over here. X, so that's x to the power one in the numerator and use the exponent laws again. So we get x to the power one half because it's one minus a half. And then now we're just ready to, to integrate. So we got four uh, x and then we're, we add one to the exponent. So we get seven halves and then we divide by the new exponent or multiply by the reciprocal that is also. Uh, and then we're going to add one to the exponent here, divide by the new exponent, add C. And then we flip and multiply here. So we end up getting eight over seven, X to the power of seven over two plus, and then again, flipping and multiplying, we get 14 over three, X to the power of three over two plus C. And then again, you can test by differentiating to see that we have the original, uh, the original function again. And then now for part E, we've got uh, this, this function, <laughs> excuse me, we've got this function inside a function. Um, now we don't know how to actually do um, a chain rule with differentiating, or sorry, with integrating. Um, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to multiply this all out, okay, to get um, or expand out the, the brackets. And then it'll be in a form that we'll be able to integrate, no problem. So this gives us 4 uh, multiplied by 1 over x squared. And then we're going to have, well, 2 over x times 1 plus 1 times 2 over x. So we're going to have, again, 4 over x and then plus one. Okay, just expanding out that binomial. And so then we'll have here, so this is actually four X to the negative two. Maybe I'll just, I should have done that first, but, and I'll leave this one because we have that, that integration rule for one over X. So I'll leave that as it is. And so then when we integrate this, we add one to the exponent. So we're gonna have four X to the negative one. And we would divide by the new exponent. We could, we can divide by negative one, but I'll just stick that negative in front just to, uh, to show that when we differentiate that, we will get four X to the negative two. And then we'll have four ln absolute value of X and then X plus C. Okay, so that, plus one is just a constant. What you don't see beside it, of course, is that x to the power of zero. And of course, you add one to that exponent and divide by one and you just get x. Okay, and so that is it for today. There's some questions for you to uh, take a look at and um, you know, practice those up. Uh, we'll move on to 16C tomorrow. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in class.